11, in translating the King James Version, they put the word unknown in there. But if you notice in the Bible, at least in many of them, that word unknown is printed in italics, which means that the translators added it. In reality, there is no such thing as an unknown tongue. Oh, now, there's a lot of tongues that's unknown to me. But if it's a language, and that's what it's talking about when it said tongue, if it's a language, somebody somewhere understands it. Peter and those, and not all 120 spoken languages on the day of Pentecost, all of them were filled with the Spirit, but all of them didn't speak another tongue. But they spoke in languages that the people heard and understood. How hear we? Every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. We're all English. Sometimes I have a hard time understanding Jamaica English, but anyway, we all speak English here this morning. So we don't need an interpreter. Now, I, I tell people sometimes, I've spoken unknown, unknown, in an unknown tongue one time, but I haste known so lest they misunderstand what I was saying. I was in the island of Curacao. That's a Dutch island about 30 miles off of the coast of Venezuela, South America. And they asked me to preach morning and evening in the service. And there were people there that didn't understand English. So there was a man stood beside me. I'd say a few words and I'd stop and he'd tell the people that didn't understand English, he'd tell them what I said. So to, to them, I was speaking in an unknown tongue. <laughs> this interpreter, he had a brother in the flesh sitting back in the congregation. And the interpreter misunderstood something I said, and his brother back in the congregation corrected him. I wouldn't have known the difference. Brother Allen and I was in Nigeria, different places. And the last place we were at, I was preaching, and Brother Ben Asadero, he, he, he was here years ago. He passed away not long ago. But he was here from camp meeting years ago. Brother Ben came to me and he said, now, that interpreter's not telling the people what you're saying. So I went to the preacher, pastor, and I said, uh, could we have Brother Ben to be my interpreter for me? Oh, yes. So when it comes time for me to get in the pulpit, here come that other fellow. And I didn't get Brother Ben after all. So I don't know what he was telling them. But I was speaking in an unknown tongue to them. But it was English. And it's not unknown to you. So we don't need an interpreter this morning. Huh? And I don't need a gift of language. Where everybody speaks in the same language, you don't need the gift of language. And again, it's not the evidence of Holy Ghost baptism anyway. Philip went to Samaria and preached the gospel. And there were people that were delivered from demons and they were saved and healed and they had a real revival there. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet, for as yet, now they had been saved, they had been baptized in water, but as for as yet, the Spirit had fallen upon none of them. 
only they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then laid they, that's John and Peter, then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Acts 8, 14, 16, 17. And I might also say they received the Holy Ghost and none of them spoke in tongues. But they received the Holy Spirit after they had been saved. So the receiving of the Holy Spirit is separate and apart from being saved from your sins. And God, this is Peter speaking there in Jerusalem, and God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between them and us, purifying their hearts by faith. That's talking about Peter's visit to Cornelius at Caesarea. So he had seen a vision, and the angel of the Lord told him to send to Joppa for Peter, that he might inform them or enlighten them more fully about the Word of God. And Peter went up there to a Gentile. Yes, he did, a Gentile. And he began to preach to them, and while he was preaching, the Holy Spirit fell upon Cornelius and those of his household. After Peter went back to Jerusalem, he was called on the carpet, criticized because he went into a Gentile's home, because that going into a Gentile's home made you unclean, according to the old traditions of the Jews before Christ was crucified. And Peter said, God gave them the Holy Spirit just like he gave us on the day of Pentecost. Who was I that I could withstand God? The reason why they spoke in different languages there then was to convince those Jews who didn't believe that the Gentiles could receive the Spirit. That was witness to them, to those unbelieving. They believed on Christ, but they didn't believe that the Gentiles could receive the Holy Spirit. But they could, and they did. For whenever Christ died, he broke down the middle wall of partition. Today, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. We're all one in Christ when we're saved. It makes no difference what color your skin is, or what your political standing is, or what your social standing is. Whether you're educated or uneducated, it makes no difference. Listen, beloved. Anyone who will measure to the Word of God can be saved and can be filled with the Spirit of God. Is it really necessary that the Christians be holy? Of course it is. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord in peace. Amen. Hebrews 12, 14. If you want to stand before the Lord in judgment and be placed on the right hand side and hear Him say, Come ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. If you want to hear that and be on the right hand side, you must live holy in this life. Amen. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Clean hands mean that you're saved from your sins. A pure heart means you've been sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
And that holy hill is God's church. Now, Christ is coming for a holy people. All these people who say that we're sinners, and they really are sinners, Christ is not going to come for them, not to take them to heaven. Christ is coming for a holy people. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Ephesians 5, 25, 26, and 27. Christ has a pure bride. He has a holy bride. Revelation 12, 1 speaks about the bride of Christ. She was a pure holy woman. She had a crown of 12 stars on her head, the apostles. She was clothed with the sun. The sun symbolized and represented the new covenant, the New Testament. She was standing on the moon, which was the old covenant. And that's the bride. That's the church that Christ is coming for when time is no more. If you want to be a part of that church that goes to heaven, you must be holy. And you start by giving your heart and your life to God. You continue by presenting your bodies a living sacrifice, being filled with the Spirit, and walking the highway of holiness daily. And again I say, what God requires, He gives grace to do. James 4.15 Let us turn in our hymn books to 415. Four one five. Let us stand. From 
depths that were sinful he saw to her and filled her with infinite love are you saved this morning is your name written on the Lamb's book of life what an opportunity we have draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you Christ this morning, won't you come? If there's something in your life you need to make right, why don't you come? Thank the Lord for the truth this morning. Thank the Lord for the beautiful church of God. We heard a Church of God message this morning based on the Bible. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And the only way we can be holy is through the power of God, through being saved and sanctified and living for Him. Greater is He that is in you, the Bible says, than he that is in the world. Our service tonight is at 6 o'clock. Who's speaking tonight for that one? Brother Shaw is going to speak for us tonight, 6 o'clock service, so we welcome you back to that particular service. Camp meeting begins Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. Are you excited? Looking forward to a wonderful time in the Lord. Brother Joy, will you close our service with a word of prayer?